thanks for tuning in. My name is Jamie DeSimone and I'm a part of the research and product development team at RetroCheck Energy Innovations. And today I'm going to walk you through uh, how to get started with our, new, our newest software program, Fantastic. So when you purchase uh, equipment, you'll get uh, this e email with it, which tells you how to download our software program. And it gives you a couple of the new features as well as what requirements you'll need on your computer. And then it'll give you this link here. You can click here, or you can go to retrocheck.com. So let's click on, click on the link here. And it'll bring up our website, uh, a big download button. So we click download, run the software, and we'll let that download for now. In the meantime, I'll tell you a little bit more about what you'll see in this email. You'll get a copy of a license key, and the license key will be good for a period of time, um, and it'll also be good for just the protocol that you're interested in using. So in this case, we'll be talking about the ASTM protocol. And so what we'll do here is we'll copy this, and we'll put it into our software program as soon as it's downloaded. In addition to that, you'll uh, catch some videos, one of which I am currently making. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit about those things. So installation and single point tests, infiltration, and uh, multi-point tests, graphing options. These are all the things you can do with your Fantastic, including auto test. So you can basically just plug in the information, push start test, and let the fan do it all. Now if you wanted to do an auto test, you have to download a driver, and you can do that from RetroTech as well. But that will cover in the future. So the software program will come up automatically once it's downloaded, and we don't have a license yet, so we'll go to Install License, and we'll paste from the clipboard, and we'll go Install License. So here it says it's licensed to RetroTech Energy Innovations, copy number one, which expires in the future, and we've created that license so that you can use the ASTM software. And we'll have a bunch of languages you can use it in, but I'm imagining most people will use it in English. So we click English and say OK. And there we go. So once you've done a whole bunch of tests, you'll have them all in the test history that will be listed on the side here. And one of the cool things about this new program is that you can include a building picture with every test that you create. So this is one of the previous tests that I had done. Um, and let's start a new one. You can go to New Test, or you can also go File, New, and it'll bring up a whole new test. So you choose your fan. I'm going to say Retrotech 2000, serial number 12345. Um, you don't have to put a serial number in, but it'll show up in your report, and it'll be nice to know which fan you actually used if you have a couple different ones that you're using in the company. And we're going to be choosing to use the DM2 gauge. Again, we can put in a serial number. And let's look at uh, some of the building images. Now, all of the information will be stored in your My Documents under RetroTech. Now, I've put this houses folder in there. It's not normally going to be there. What you will have, though, is logs, reports, templates, and tests. And once you've started a test, so we'll see this one here, it'll be called 26151044. No, it's not there yet. It will be in the near future. So let's select a building image. Um, let's see what some of these guys look like. I like the looks of this one. So that's the house that we'll be testing. And the test technician, I've already put that in, but I'll put it in again. Jamie, building description looks kind of like a haunted house, and it's in the middle of nowhere. Okay, now we can go through and add some of the information about the house. So let's say it's about 200 feet above sea level. It's about 25 feet above the ground. It's a fairly big house, so it's 15,000 cubic feet. Floor area of 3,500 square foot size. The enclosure area of 3,000. And you see the start date and the time have already been added for you. Now if you open this and you didn't start the test immediately, you can say get time and it'll get the newest time. 
So the average speed outside is about 4 miles per hour, and the direction it's coming from is the westerly direction. And the operator, which is me, is inside the building. We move on to temperatures. Let's say inside temperature is about 74 degrees. Outside, it's about 68. It's a bit chilly today. So what we can see is that as soon as you put in a temperature, it automatically copies it to the other temperatures. So these are the indoors, and these are the outdoor temperatures. Um, you, can you can easily overwrite that. It does that just so that in case you forget to add the temperatures, you're likely not going to get too much different um, before the test and after the test. Uh, so this is the indoor temperature. Outdoor temperature is about 68. Outdoor temperature is likely not going to change. Maybe the indoor temperature will change a little bit. So let's say it's 72 after the test. Now, because we're doing a manual test, uh, we're going to be adding the data ourselves, and we're doing a single point test. So we're just going to add one building pressure. So let's say we're testing to pressure of 50 pascals. And we want to choose a range. Now, generally, when you choose a range, you're going to be looking at what range the fan what range plate is on the fan at the time, but because we're adding the data in ourselves, we're going to add in a CFM value. So let's say it's about 1000. And we can say that there's a bias pressure that we checked before the test of about negative 1, and afterwards it was a bias pressure of 1. So we can move down here and click Calculate, and that'll show up in the gray squares, which are the ones that have been calculated for you. So we have a coefficient and an exponent value and a correlation coefficient. Now these really are only valid when you have a whole bunch of, of points that you're looking at. But with this, we only have a single point, and so a correlation coefficient doesn't really mean anything when there's only one point. But these are some of the um, results of the test. So we have airflow at STP, which is standard temperature and pressure. Uh, flow per unit area, per unit volume. Now, if you don't add an area or a volume, these will not show up. But it won't change the rest of the test. And it'll give you an equivalent leakage area. So in our house, we have an, a leakage area of about 103 square feet, square inches at 10 PA. And 54.8 square inches at 4 PA. So those are some uh, leaks that we're going to have to deal with. Now, if we wanted to uh, save this test, we can have autosave. This is a new feature in the program. We can have autosave on or autosave off. So you see that it's been unclicked. Now, autosave basically means that every 15 seconds, whatever information you add in here will be saved. And it'll be saved in a file under your My Documents. So I'll show you that now. So My Documents, it'll RetroTech file, and Tests. And here are some of the tests that I've done. So the one that we did was started at 1044. So the year, the month, the date, and 1044. And we can double click it to open it up in here, but we'll just be opening up the same test. What else saves in here are um, reports, which we haven't generated yet. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And we've got logs. So the logs work based on uh, every single day. So you'll have a log for this day and then any other time that you have, you'll have a separate log for the next day. And the logs are good if you have any uh, bugs to report or if you have any problems and you need technical support. You send them the log and it'll show us what uh, you've done and what we can do to help you. So let's generate a report. Go to File, Generate Report. We see that there's a new template available. We say yes, we'd like to download it. OK, the template's been upgraded. The templates are imported automatically. And we upgrade them every so often. So you'll see uh, new templates maybe every couple months. Sometimes it takes a bit of time for the report to generate. But you can see the status bar slowly moving across the screen. And here we go, report completed. Well, let's take a look at this. So it tells you this is for the ASTM standard, and it has the building image there. A test file name, so you can find that easily in your computer. The building address and description, technician, 
test company and it tells you what fan you used and what gauge you used. And this is just a bit of a explanation of your test. So your leakage rate at 50 PA was this number of CFM and it's equivalent to about 103 square inches of leakage and you can continue along reading that. And the cost of air leakage, this is the infiltration and ventilation information. We will look over that in at the, on the next video and I'll explain to you how that works. So I hope to catch you then. Thanks. Thank you.